Hey, what is going on guys? So as the work on a Master Grade Barbatos is coming to a close, it's time to start the next painted build. And this time we're working on the real grade Sazabi. Now this one is for a commission. And so it didn't require any custom work onto this, basically just uh, prep and painting and all of that, just a kind of just a normal paint job. So as you're seeing the parts now, everything, is, all the parts have all been sanded and prepared and washed. Now they're all just in here. They've been drying and now I need to separate the parts out. Uh, to the different colors and then choose the colors and then we can get started on the painting on them so i have the idea of the color scheme from the client for this commission he wants it in like a funky teal kind of color scheme which i totally support i really like the idea for a custom color scheme or a really unique color scheme for the sasabi and so while this video is not really going to have anything too much in the way of i think like uh, tips or anything that you guys can use anything like really too informative it's just basically just to show you uh, the process of something else that I'm working on. So this is what I'm working on. So now uh, what I'm going to do is separate these out into the colors. Now the Sazabi is basically all red, but I'm not going to paint it all in one color. I do want to have uh, two different tones of teal. So I'm just going to separate it basically along the lines of how the kit is separated. So if you guys will remember the base kit, it actually, because it's an RG, it actually comes in three different tones of red. So I don't think I'm going to go with three different tones. I think I'm just going to go two tones. Uh, so I'm just going to separate them all out. So I'll have the main red color and then the lighter red color, which I'll separate to just my main teal color and my secondary teal color. And then we just got all the frame and the backpack and the weapon. So there'll just be a couple other parts, but for the most part, going to be mostly teal. So let's just get everything all separated out. All right, so here's everything all laid out. So for all of the red parts, which will ultimately be teal, I'm just going to use some white primer for those, so that way our teal color is nice and light. He said he wanted it to be bright, pastel kind of colors, so for the main armor color, we're gonna be using Gaia Notes number 28 here, which is a stone green. So we're gonna use this for uh, all the armor. Uh, for the lighter, for like a little bit lighter tone of armor, armor what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add just a little bit of white to this just to lighten it just a little bit so there's just a tiny bit of difference between the two of them. Uh, for all the black parts, I don't want to go that dark because basically I want the whole thing to be like very light and uh, desaturated, uh, kind of bright colored. So I'm just going to use, actually this is number 63 uh, blue-gray. So it doesn't look that dark, but I think compared to the other colors, it will still look like it's the darkest part of the kit, just the backpack parts there, like that. For these vent, vent parts here, which were originally yellow, I'm just going to do those in white. I'm using, uh, this is the Virtual On 01 warm white color, so it's a nice uh, warm white, basically, obviously. And then for the inner frame, I'm going to be using uh, Nazca Light uh, in Mechanical Surfacer. So this is the surfacer that's nice because it works as a surfacer and just a paint, so you don't have to spray your surfacer, aka primer. Uh, and then paint again over that. You can just use this just on its own and it's just a light colored uh, primer. So this will just be the primer color, which will also just be the paint color for the inner frame, which is just a, you know, a very light gray. So that is pretty much it. That's gonna be basically our color scheme for the Sazabi. So from here, it's just time to get to work. All right guys, cutting ahead a little bit now, I've got all the base colors all painted and also got some gloss coats to get everything ready for doing some panel lining. So I'm going and doing some of the assembly. Now, some parts I can't really assemble until after doing some panel lining and detail painting on like some of the inner frame parts and things like that. Uh, that would be easier to do that before I assemble the parts together. So I'm just, just assembled kind of just enough just some parts to kind of get start getting an idea of how everything's looking and pretty pleased with how this is looking. I think the color is turning out pretty nice. The two-tone kind of turquoise color I think is pretty nice. You, know, you have like the front skirt here in the centerpiece. Those are the two different tones. So it's really subtle and it's especially going to be harder to see now uh, with the with everything gloss coated. Once the flat coat, the final matte coat is on there, that's going to dull everything a little bit as well and just kind of flatten everything out. Uh, and then I think then the the different tones will be a little bit more apparent, which will be good, but still still it's gonna be very subtle between the two different colors there. And you can see rather than black, I've got uh, this kind of uh, very dull 
blue color. So like for example, here is the backpack which is opened up because I need to go in and, and do some of the paneling and detail painting on this first before we can close that up. But you can see the backpack was originally black and now it is in, the, yeah, just all the black color has all been changed to this kind of stone blue color. And for another example, for the fuel tanks, rather than keeping those black like the rest of the backpack, I wanted them to be a little bit different colors. So this is in a kind of light greenish tan kind of color, which I think uh, should look pretty nice once this is all together like that. So I'm really liking how the colors are turning out. So now it's just a matter of going in and doing all the panel lining and detail painting and then more detail painting. And then finally getting into the uh, water slide decals and all of that before we can finish up. So the painting process went pretty well. I didn't really have to, I mean, because it's an RG and there's tons of color part separation, I didn't really have to do any masking except for only on this one part that I had to do any masking on. It's just for the missiles. I wanted them to be uh, in orange and white here. And so only after painting these did I realize how much these look like uh, crayons. And so I don't know. Uh, they still look pretty cool like that and I think once you know they're installed on the kit and everything it's not gonna look like a set of crayons but as it is now they look like just crayons which it looks kind of weird but that is where I'm at on it now so let's head over and get to work on all the detailing up on this. 